I read the Oxbow Incident for June on the Range, which I had planned to read for a while. Um, I'm from Nevada originally. Somehow I never read this book. I just finished it this morning. Usually I wait a little longer before I talk about a book, I like to do it. I like to finish my reading the night before and then maybe do the video in the morning. But And this book I'm gonna have to sit with a while anyway. This is a very, 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 very deep book. Very well written with a lot of characters. A lot of very well delineated characters. I guess people know, I would probably be spoilers in here uh, Spoilers for the first half. It's a book, I've heard it described as a book about uh, mob justice. There's a character in the book, the son of the, sort of the, the main villain, Tetley, has a son who he doesn't like, who he thinks is kind of a simp, I guess, a wimp. Um, and he, the, the son, Younger Tetley, I can't remember his name at the moment. The kid, they call him a lot of times. Oh, there's, there's another character they call the kid, too. Calls it the pack. Like, I've heard it described as, as, a, as, a, as a book about uh, mob justice, mob mentality. But it's, it's really pack mentality. Uh, the story's told by a sort of neutral narrator, not entirely neutral narrator, but these it starts out these two uh, guys, two cowboys are right into a town, a particular town in Nevada, where they're semi-known. They're not really part of the community, but they're not complete strangers either. They're just enough on the outside that the main character who tells the story is is really a excellent view for us to see different points of view and at one point he talks about, you know, because several people have really sort of poured their hearts out to him, this main character, um, this narrator character, I mean, throughout the story. And he goes, I don't know why everybody wants to confess to me. Yeah, that's the kind of person he is. He's, he's thoughtful, um, but he's not one of the main drivers of the plot. Uh he does say earlier, and I want to read this short passage here. This really kind of, oh, it just, I talked too long and it went out. So sort of early on, it starts out, they come into this town, the, the narrator and his friend Gil, and uh, very conventional sort of Western setup. You know, there's a saloon, there's a saloon keep who's kind of sarcastic, there's uh, there's poker games, there's fist fights, you know, there's all that kind of stuff. And uh, it's all on the service of like a deeper story though. So probably not the one, if you want to read a, a regular fun loving western, probably not the one to pick. It's, it's very intense, I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to pick up another western right away. Probably by tomorrow I will be. Anyway, and so then there's, uh, but there's a lot of tension in this town because of, uh, there's been a uh, this is news to the narrator. There's been a lot of cattle rustlings. And there is... This very night has been a murder related to the rustlings. So uh, after the first chapter or so, there's, there's talk of putting getting a posse together. It's another uh, another convention of the, we're all going to get out. We're going to find out who these wrestlers are, who are now murderers, and we're going to capture them. And this is this posse and this uh, this sort of fever that develops is is centered around this character named Tetley, who's the the old rancher character who um, who really wants to get this going. And there's, you know, there's opposing forces. There's the justice, there's the judge who says, you're not going to go out there and lynch anybody. You're going to bring them back to justice. And Tetley is like, we're gonna do what we have to do. And, you know, he's, I'm warning you, do not do this. Do not become a mob. Just if you're gonna go out and get these people, if you can find them, bring them back. We're not animals, we're a civilization. Now there'd be no book if that's what would happen. Anyway, 
So there's a lot, even early on, there's a lot of discussion back, like people want to join the posse and not. There's an interesting passage here <clears throat> where one of the characters says to the narrator, uh, speaking about a third character, Joyce says, uh, Mr. Davies didn't think they'd go, not if somebody stood up against them, meaning Tetley's group that are really gung-ho for going out. And then the narrator says, I wasn't so sure of that. Most men are more afraid of being thought cowards than of anything else, and a lot more afraid of being thought physical cowards than moral ones. There are a lot of loud arguments to cover moral cowardice, but even an animal will know if you're scared. If rarity is worth, if rarity is worth, then moral courage is a lot higher quality than physical courage courage, but accepting diamonds and hard cash, there aren't many who take anything because of its rarity, just the other way. Davies was resisting something that had immediacy and a strong animal grip with something remote and mistrusted. He'd have to make his argument look common sense and hardy or else humorous, and I wasn't sure he could do either. So these are the kind of questions that are going, to, going back and forth when they're deciding to do this. Go take this posse out and meet out justice, and it's, it's quite a, a tragedy, um, or quite an ugly. You know, it shows a lot of the ugly side of human nature. Where you know, at a certain point, they're just doing it because they want to do it. Um, there's like such an there's so there's so many off ramps they can take. You know, there's there's the the people that they catch who they think have done this murder. Uh, there's a kid among them too, a, a, a young man with a young family at home who's like, all you have to do, you know, and they find these these cattle that belong to a rancher with him. He says, I bought I bought these, and he goes, No, nah, this seems very unlikely that you bought these cattle because we know this rancher and he doesn't sell any cattle this time of year and he goes I know he doesn't he told me that he usually doesn't he really did it as a favor to me all you have to do is check you know you've got me as a captive all you have to do is ride back to town all you have to do is go back to town and check and if he says yeah I bought these cattle but they don't want to do that Tetley doesn't want to do that Tetley's really by this point you know it takes a while to get to this point you know they've gone through some trials and tribulations to get out there and it's the middle of the night um, so they do what they're going to do and it's the, and the book is the different ramifications of that and how different people feel treat that and how people justify their own behavior afterwards and how people other people cannot justify their own behavior afterwards so like I say it's a lot to think about it's a very powerful book um, uh, I highly highly recommend it uh, not just for June on the Range just if you want to read a very a, a powerful American story I always wondered why they didn't teach it to us in school in Nevada, because they're always when I grew up in Nevada, they're always pushing, you know, local stuff on us. Uh, they never talked about Walter Van Tilburn Clark, which is probably is probably the most famous, maybe the only famous, you know, the only writer they ever told us about in school. This is back in the seventies. The only uh, writer related to Nevada was. Mark Twain, you know, who wrote some, who didn't write any fiction about Nevada, as far as I can remember, but he wrote some, you know, travel, and he did spend time in Virginia City, you know, he had uh, gold fever, silver fever, he's trying to make a living out there too, like a lot of other people. So they love talking about Mark Twain, I, I guess I'm not so surprised they didn't want to talk about Walter Van Tilburn Clark, I know he's highly respected now they probably didn't think it was appropriate for kids although they they had us read some pretty intense stuff sometimes but this is quite a powerful novel uh, with all the western trappings and tropes uh, but used uh, to tell a, a, a very well thought out deeper story so i think it would appeal to fans of westerns and fans of just uh, 
you know, any American fiction written, this is written in 1940, I almost said post-war, but it's, you know, it's the war era, uh, mid-20th century, uh, very, very well received at the time. Walter Van Tilburn Clark, Tilburg at Clark didn't, only wrote four books, basically. He wrote three novels. This is the first. Uh, he wrote one called The Track of the Cat, which is uh, sort of a more, it looks, I don't know that much about it. It's uh, sort of, ex I really want to read his other books though. It's sort of a existential metaphysical story story maybe along the lines of Moby Dick in a way where these guys are out hunting this 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 cat this panther or cougar cougar or something like that who has seems to have like you know more supernatural properties more symbolic properties and that seems like it's a longer book this this book is is not that long it's about 220 pages I think uh, but there's so many people in it. There's so many characters. It's so much. I don't know how. I wonder how long it took him to write this because there's really a lot of. It's really well executed in terms of. The pacing and. And. That in his second book he wrote three novels. Uh, I talked about the track of the cat and the Oxbow incident. Uh, his middle novel was a. Story about art, a story of a young artist growing up and becoming an artist. Um, I can't think of the name of it right now. And then he wrote, and he also has a collection of short stories. And then for many, many years afterwards, he he didn't write. He kept teaching. And according to this piece I read by Cyril Connolly, oh no, by Wallace Stegner. Um, Wallace Stegner was a friend of his and asked why he did why he stopped writing and. Well, the Van Tilburn Clark, I guess I could just call him Tilburg Clark, or just Clark, would say, oh, I, I, I still write. I write all the time. I just throw everything away because it's not good enough, which, you know, which is maybe what happens when your first novel is a masterpiece. Like I said, it was an acknowledged masterpiece at, at the time. It was made into a movie three years later with Henry Fonda, which I saw a long time ago. It's really... You know, I mean, what can you expect from Hollywood? It doesn't really delve into all the issues, but a lot, a lot of the, it, it delves into a lot of them. It's definitely worth seeing. Okay, I think that's probably enough about. It. I'm trying to keep these shorter. I'm going to leave it here, and we'll talk about more books next time.